last year I received a $2.2 million National Science Foundation research grant and we're studying whether or not we can use outdoor advertising, really transit advertising, to influence how people think in terms of their attitudes and also their general awareness about climate change. So the uh, National Science Foundation research grant is about a 14-month program to influence consumers about what they think about climate change. And it's broken out into three different phases. So the first phase of the campaign is reality. And it's about trying to show people that um, climate change is real and that scientists agree that climate change is real and that humans have an impact in climate change. Um, and so that is a three-month campaign where we're putting up posters on platforms in the subway stations in Boston, as well as uh, posters inside the train cars themselves. And that is the first phase to try to educate consumers that, yes, scientists agree that climate change is real. The next phase of the campaign is a four-month campaign that is about relevance. How can we now show that climate change has an impact for Boston residents. It's not just something that affects somebody somewhere else on the other side of the globe, but it does have relevance to Boston. So that four month campaign, we again use posters on the platforms of the subway stations in Boston, as well as inside the train cars. And we're just showing how different effects of climate can impact Boston, Bostonians. For example, showing about um, uh, the, the storms that have hit the, the Northeast, like Sandy, how that could influence Boston in terms of floods, how um, the weather will change in terms of having very uh, strong winter storms come through, um, dumping large amounts of snowfalls where that may have been um, more rare occurrences, it's happening now more frequently, showing how that can impact Boston. So that's the second phase. The third phase is about hope. We've told you now in the first phase that um, scientists agree that climate change is happening. And in the second phase, we've shown how it's relevant to Boston, how it can influence Bostonian life. The third phase is to now provide hope to Bostonians. What can Bostonians do to change um, the way they do uh, or the way they uh, live their lives to either adapt to what is happening in terms of climate change or maybe even begin to prevent it or slow it down. So we're gonna show a number of ads, also again on the subway platforms and inside the train cars, that show um, how Bostonian businesses and people are mitigating climate change. And some of those examples are, are using the bikes that are for rent around Boston. Um, some of it is putting more green space in Boston which absorbs more carbon dioxide, um, which helps you know, keep Boston cooler. Um, so there's a lot of different activities that we're highlighting in that third campaign. Well, we do have an interesting spokesperson for the campaign, Ozzy. He really kind of came out of the fact that when people think about climate change, they don't want to either think about it or they don't think it's relevant. In many ways, it's correlated with the metaphor of an ostrich sticking his head in the sand and kind of ignoring it. If I don't pay attention to it, it doesn't exist. And so it was with that idea that we came up with Ozzy, the ostrich. And he really became the spokesperson or ambassador for our cause, something that is identifiable, that people will immediately recognize and therefore not have to process the ad too much to recognize, okay, what are they talking about? They'll recognize Ozzy and they'll immediately go, okay, this is about science2go.org. They're talking about changing uh, people's attitudes and awareness about climate change. And one of the efforts that we're working on right now to kind of highlight Ozzy even further is an app. Um, we're developing an app that'll be on our website in the second phase um, that allows a, a user to take an image of themselves, a picture of themselves, a selfie, if you will, and upload it to the website and have Ozzy appear with them or beside them in a photograph. And that photograph, they can either post it to our Facebook page or their Facebook page. Um, they can forward it to a friend via email. They can download it. So it's really an exciting way to kind of um, 
create interest in the cause. And hopefully through this effort, they'll be more drawn to our website and they'll be able to find some of the content that's there. So we're using Ozzy as a catalyst for conversation, a way to drive people to our website. And this app is just one of those tools that we've created to do that. From a marketing standpoint, I believe this uh, campaign about climate change in Boston you know, has a lot of relevance. First and foremost, it is a type of medium in, in advertising that a lot of people don't necessarily think about. We think about TV and we certainly now think about you know social media advertising but we don't think about outdoor transit advertising as much and transit advertising is something that kind of sits in the background of what we do when we are commuting or um, you know walking around and, and one thing that we want to show is that we can use this advertising medium to influence people's uh, attitudes and awareness about an issue and we think it's going to be uh, really helpful and impactful. I do specialize in out of home or outdoor advertising and it's a type of medium that I really love partly because it sits in the background of everything we do. You know it's not like television, it's not like magazines, the ad is not part of the medium. Outdoor advertising is really part of that greater environment in which we you know we occupy our lives and I see that as a challenge. How do we make that advertising relevant and informative to those that encounter it? And so really that's part of the reason why I like to study out of home advertising. The other aspect is I think it's a medium that really allows for a great amount of creativity. I mean to get noticed in an environment that is very cluttered, very noisy, you need to have an execution that is interesting, that captivates, one that is three-dimensional and so these types of things are the issues that I really like to study in out-of-home advertising. My favorite out-of-home advertising of all time, um, I have to go back to when I was working in Hungary which was um, in the year 2000. I was taking a drive outside of Budapest which is, which is the capital towards um, some of the outlying areas and as I was driving along the highway I noticed an ad off in the distance for Heineken and as I was driving by, it, you could see that the, the beer bottle itself, was beer was being poured out of it, and it was filling up a glass. So as I was driving by, you could see that happen. But what it was really was just really a static ad that as you progressed by it, you could see it kind of pouring it. And what was interesting, it wasn't at the point when we had digital advertising. So there wasn't, you know, a, um, a large TV screen showing it moving. It was just as the angle in which you approach it and you pass by it, you were able to see it as if it was three-dimensional. So the reason why I liked it was because of the fact that it wasn't three-dimensional, but it looked like it. And it captured your attention because as you were driving by, you thought, it's pouring, it's pouring that glass of beer for me. So that's what really kind of captured me. And again, it's that idea of creativity and using it in a way that is kind of unexpected um, is what I really like. How we're going to measure success for the campaign in Boston is through a couple different um, avenues. Our primary call to action is really just to become more informed on the process, and that is going and visiting our website, which is science2go.org, um, becoming uh, a follower of our Twitter account, signing up uh, to like our Facebook page. All of these aspects is really to deliver content and information about climate change, um, to become informed on what climate change is, how to um, mitigate it, and maybe even how to prevent it or slow it down. That's what our primary goal is about. How we will measure success is looking at um, how we've changed people's attitudes about climate change, their level of awareness about climate change. That's specific to climate change um, uh, in general. But to the campaign itself, we'll also look to measure, did they see the ads that we saw? Did they recognize um, our ostrich, which we call Ozzy? You know, Will they see him? Do they recognize him as, as a spokesperson of sorts for this campaign? And so we'll look at uh, metrics like that. 
We'll also look at um, online metrics, the number of visits to the website, the length of time they spend on the websites, the number of pages they visited. We'll also look at how many followers we have um, on Twitter and Facebook and whether or not they're engaged in the content. Did they like it? Did they forward it to somebody else? So we'll look at all of those different metrics to see whether or not we've succeeded.